it's Alice and today I thought it could be fun to take a look at how many must read classics I have read in my life so far. So I just thought this could be an interesting thing to do and I found a list on Penguin's website of like a hundred must read classics and this list is supposed to have like a mix of really well known classics and lesser known ones and I thought we could just go through it and see and talk about what I've read, what I might be interested in reading, and then I'm sure there are going to be some books that I will never read because I don't want to. Now I just have to point out that the term must read is nonsense to me. Like I don't subscribe to that kind of thinking. You don't have to read anything. Life is short so just read whatever you enjoy and no one has to read classics. I happen to be quite interested in them and I kind of want to like get back into reading them so I thought this could be like fun to do. Although the term classic and like the classic genre is kind of weird because classics can be so many different things, you know? Obviously there are several of these types of lists out there and I'm sure they all have different books on them but I just went for this one because to be honest it's the first one that I found. <laughs> So we're just gonna go with this one and I haven't looked through this so I'm excited to see what books are on here and what I've read and yeah, let's just get into this list. So the first one on this list is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is not surprising. I have read this book and I love it. It's one of my favorite classics and one of my favorite romance novels actually and my favorite Jane Austen. Maybe we should keep track actually of how many of these books that I've read as we go through this. So I'm gonna put a number up somewhere where we can keep track of how many I've read. I don't know, I haven't looked through the list so I don't know how many I think I will have read but maybe, maybe we should guess like 20 or 30. I don't know, we'll see. The second book on here is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I've also read this one, loved it. I think that's a really good book. It's very layered and it's a great book to discuss, I feel, which is maybe why so many people read it in school. Then we have The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, also one of my favorites. It's wonderful. I know some people don't get on with it, but I love this one. Then we have 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I actually haven't read this one, but I do have a copy of it. I just... I don't know why, I've had that copy for years and I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but everyone says this book is amazing. I think it's like magical realism, it says so here, and it's like a multi-generational novel. I really need to read this one. I do think I'm really gonna like it. Next we have In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. I have read this one and it's very very good, it's a true crime book. It's very thorough, like it's very detailed, but really interesting. Then we have White Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese, and I really want to read this one. This is like a type of prequel to Jane Eyre, I think, and it's all about Berta, who, if you haven't read the book, it's a character in that book that doesn't really have a voice. And I'm guessing like this book sort of gives that character a voice, which sounds very interesting. Then we have Brave New World by Aldous Huxley, which I have read and I really like that book. It's a very, very interesting dystopian book. It's really messed up, but I kind of want to reread it actually because it's been a while. Then we have I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. I haven't read this one, but I feel like I want to read it even though I don't really know what it's about. I think maybe someone has recommended this book to me. It says here it's about this girl's upbringing in a crumbling castle with her eccentric family. And that does sound very interesting. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte is one of my favorite books ever. I love that book. It might be in my like top five, maybe even top three favorite classics. I really want to reread this one as well actually because it's been a while. Then we have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky and this one I can never really figure out if I want to read or not. I'm kind of like avoiding it because I feel like it's one of those like really long, slow Russian classics that I should maybe read, but that I don't know if I really want to. People say it's amazing though, so if any of you have read it, let me know if it's worth it. It does say so here that this is a masterful and completely captivating depiction of a man experiencing a profound mental unraveling. 
and that does sound pretty interesting. Then we have The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Is that considered a classic? I guess it's almost like 30 years old, so maybe it's like a modern classic. Those of you who have been here for a while will know that The Secret History is one of my all-time favorite books. It's in my maybe top three of like my favorite books ever. And I'm gonna reread this soon because I just love this book so, so much. The Call of the Wild by Jack London, I have not read, although I know my grandpa is like a huge fan of Jack London. And I always thought this was a children's book, but I guess maybe it's not. It's set in the Canadian wilderness or like Alaska, which does sound like a very interesting setting. So maybe I'm interested in that. I didn't think I was, but maybe I am. Then we have The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I'm gonna read this book, I have a copy of it, and I'm a huge fan of John Wyndham, so this is just about, like, actually getting to the book. Next, we have another Jane Austen, we have Persuasion. I wonder if all of Jane Austen's books are gonna be on this list. I haven't read all of them, but I have read Persuasion, and I think I should reread that book, because when I read it, I don't think I was in the right headspace for it. I really enjoy Jane Austen, but I sometimes find the language a little bit difficult. So I struggled with this one a little bit, but I think on a reread, I would really love it. Then we have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have a copy of this book as well. I don't know if I'm ever going to read this, to be honest. I think the story of, like, this man being eaten by a... I almost said a shark. It's not a shark. It's a whale. I think that sounds really interesting and it's like about survival and stuff. But then I've also heard that it like explores whale fishing and it, there are like chapters all about that, which I'm not interested in at all. And it's kind of like with War and Peace actually, where there are these like chapters about military strategy that are really boring. I really struggled with those and I feel like this might have some of the same thing which makes me very apprehensive and it's also really long. The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis I have read. I haven't read it since I was a kid though. I remember borrowing it from the library when I was like... I don't remember but I'd learned to read so maybe I was like 10 or 11. I really enjoyed this book and I should probably reread it. I don't have a copy of it though, so maybe I should find one. To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf, I have read. It's not my favorite by Woolf. I think I gave it like three stars. My favorite is Mrs. Dalloway. I like Virginia Woolf, but I do find the way she writes a little bit exhausting sometimes. She writes in like stream of consciousness and there aren't a lot of breaks and the sentences are really long and I don't remember a whole lot from this book, but I just remember liking it and not loving it. Then we have The Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. I've never even heard of this book. It says here that this is the story of a 16-year-old girl who was sent to live with her aunt in London after her mother dies, and then she falls for this man, and it's all about adolescent love and innocence betrayed. Reading that, I'm not like super interested in it, but if any of you have read it and loved it, tell me about it. Then we have Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy. I have read this. I remember when I read it, I loved it. But now that it's been a few years and I've sort of thought about it, I don't think I love it as much. I don't think I'm ever gonna reread it because I don't think I would like it as much on a reread. I much prefer Far From the Batting Crowd by Thomas Hardy, although, this reminds me that I need to read like more of his books. I feel like I maybe have one by him that I haven't read. Next we have Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, which is one of my all-time favorite classics, one of my favorite books. I just love this book so much. I know that, I understand that it can be a little bit difficult to get into, but I think it's amazing. It might be one of my favorite like gothic horror-ish books. Then we have The Master and the Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. I have a copy of this and I just need to read it. I think I mentioned in a recent video that I'm thinking of doing like a classics project for next year where I like read one classic a month or something and I'm thinking of reading this one so let me know if you'll be interested in seeing a vlog about that book. I think it could be very interesting. I don't know what the book is about though. I just I feel like I've heard that it's really good. Then we have another one that I haven't heard of. It's The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley. 
And I really like this cover that they're showing here. It's one of those like modern classics from Penguin that ha used to have the white spines, now they have the blue spines. I really like this design. It says it's a moving exploration of a young boy's loss of innocence and a critical view of society at the end of the Victorian era. Sounds semi-interesting. Let me know if any of you have read it. Then we have One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Casey. I have not read this book and I haven't seen the movie. I'm pretty sure there is a movie and I don't even really know what it's about. It says it's a set in a psychiatric ward, which is interesting, which is ruled by a tyrannical head nurse. Maybe I should try to read this this fall. It sounds kind of like creepy or scary-ish. I don't have a copy of it though, but I could just go get one. <laughs> Up next, we have 1984 by George Orwell. I love this book. I say this every time <laughs> that I mention it, but I still think about this book all the time. It's another one that I really need to reread. It's a fantastic dystopian book that really makes you think and really teaches you a lot. Another book that I don't think I've ever heard of is Budden Brooks by Thomas Mann. I don't know what this is about, but it says it's a family ethic and it portrays the slow decline of a wealthy and highly esteemed merchant family. I don't know if that sounds super interesting. It's one of those books that just sounds really long, so maybe not so interested in that. Then we have The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. I have only read one book by John Steinbeck and I kind of want to read more. I have east of eden so i might read that first and if i really like it i might try to read this one as well beloved by tony morrison i absolutely want to read morrison is an author i really want to get into but i don't really know where to start so if any of you have any recommendations let me know is beloved the one to start with or i think i have another book by her song of solomon is that a good place to start let me know then we have The Code of the Worcesters by P.G. Wodehouse. I have read this one and it looks like it's a third in a series, which I may be not that interested in. Now Dracula by Bram Stoker, I have read. I read this in my early 20s and I don't know if this is a controversial opinion, but I thought that book was kind of boring. I don't remember a whole lot from it so maybe i remember it incorrectly but i just thought it really dragged out i remember being glad that i'd read it because you sort of understand a lot of references and you can sort of see where a lot of vampire stuff comes from but i just felt like it kind of dragged out and it was not as creepy or spooky as i thought it was going to be the lord of the rings by tolkien i have read i read this Again, I think in my early 20s. I don't know if I'll ever reread this book. I kind of want to. Maybe I'll do it one more time in my life, but it is really, really long. And there are a lot of descriptions of trees. And I personally think we have some really good movie adaptations of Lord of the Rings. So whenever I sort of feel like getting into that world, I'll always just like watch the movies instead. But maybe like... 20 years i'll reread this book the adventures of huckleberry finn by mark twain i have not read but i want to read it's one of those like adventure books that just seems really nice i don't know if this is kind of dark but it just sounds like a really nice story now great expectations by charles dickens hmm i don't know if i'll ever read this i feel like Dickens might not be the author for me. <laughs> I read, oh, what's that book called? I read Oliver Twist by Dickens and I liked it, but I really didn't love it. And I don't know if I'm ever gonna read anything else by him. It's one of those things where I feel like I should, but then I also feel like I shouldn't feel like I should because no one needs to read anything. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna read this one. Catch 22 by Joseph Heller is a book that I want to read. I haven't read it, I don't have a copy of it, but I just, I don't even know what it's about, but I just feel like I've seen some reviews that made me feel like it would be a good read for me. Then we have The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I don't know if I've ever heard of this book. I feel like I may have. I've heard of this author at least. 
I don't know if I'm interested in this, to be honest. It seems like it's about this marriage. I don't know. Let me know if any of you have read this. Do you think I would like it? Tell me. Next, we have another book that I don't think I've heard of. It's Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. It looks interesting though. Like I like this cover and it follows this great and famous warrior who is one of the most powerful men of his clan and then outsiders threaten his way of life and his temper and pride might be his downfall. That does sound very interesting. Have any of you read it? Let me know what you thought. Then we have Middle March by George Eliot. This is one of those books that I feel like I should really at least try to read because a lot of people recommend this book to me, but it's so long. I know people say it's worth it, but then I've also heard people say that it's kind of like slow and it like meanders quite a lot, which doesn't excite me all that much. So maybe I'll try it, but I really don't know. It's one of those books that I want to have read, but I don't know if I actually want to read it, to be honest. Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. I feel like I've heard of this book quite a lot, but I don't remember what it's about. I don't know if this would be a good read for me, so if any of you have read it, let me know what you think. Then we have The Iliad by Homer. I don't know if I'll ever read this, to be honest. It's one of those books that I feel like I should read, but then I don't know if I would get that much from it, to be honest, because I sometimes struggle with like really old English language. Maybe I could try to read it in Norwegian if there is a Norwegian translation. I'm sure there is. Maybe that would be easier for me. Vanity Fair by William Makepeace Thackeray. I have never had any interest in reading this. I don't know why. I've never really looked into it, but it's just one of those books that, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be interested in reading it. Then we have Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. I don't know about this one. I feel like this is one of those books, again, that's kind of long and I don't know if I would like or not. It sounds interesting, but I don't know if I'll ever get around to reading it, to be honest. I might have a copy of this somewhere, actually, or I might have gotten rid of it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever read this. Then we have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I have read this, I read it for school, and I remember liking it because we discussed it in class and I thought it was really interesting. I think I would hate this book if I ever reread it, so I might just leave that alone and never look at it again. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, I have read. I really like this book, it's kind of like being on drugs. <laughs> Like, it's really unstructured and it's a little bit all over the place, but it's fun and kind of like sweet. Then we have another book by George Eliot. It's The Mill on the Floss. I, like, if I'm gonna read a book by George Eliot, it's gonna be Middlemarch, and I've never really thought about reading this book because I know that if I'm gonna read anything by this author, it will be this other book. Maybe if I like Middlemarch, I'll give this a go. I don't really know. It, it seems like George Eliot wrote really long books, so if this is really long as well, <laughs> I might just never read it. Then we have another one that I haven't heard of. It's Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. I have another book by this author on my shelves. I don't remember the title, but I think if I'm ever gonna read a book by him, it's gonna be the one that I have. And I think this is the second in a series, which immediately makes me not a lot interested. Another Country by James Baldwin. I don't know if I've heard of this book, but I've heard of this author and I don't know if I'm that interested in his work. I don't know a lot about it. So let me know if any books by him are worth reading. Maybe this one, I don't know. Then we have Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I don't think I'm ever gonna read this book to be honest. Again, it's really, really long and I feel like it's very <laughs> depressing. And at least right now, I'm not that interested in reading it. I do feel like it's such an epic story that it might be worth it, but I don't know about this one. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. I have read and really liked. I read it when I was a kid though, so I don't know how I would feel about it now, but I feel like Willy Wonka is fun at any age. Then we have The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. 
I've never heard of this one. It says it's a coming of age tale of teenage rebellion. I don't know. Maybe not that interested. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandra Dumas. I do want to read. I don't think I have a copy of it, but it's one of those like epic books that I think I would really like, but again, I find it kind of intimidating. So maybe I should try to read this for my little classics project next year. That might be like good motivation. Ulysses by James Joyce is a book I think I'm interested in. I don't know what it's about though. So it's just one of those books that I've heard of and I feel like I might like it. It says that it survived censorship, controversy, and even legal action. But then it also says it might be the greatest novel of the 20th century or the most unreadable. So, hmm, I don't know. Have any of you read it? Did you like it? Let me know. We're halfway through now and number 51 is East of Eden by John Steinbeck. I think I mentioned this, that I want to read it. I have a copy of it. I just need to get to it. Then we have The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I think if I'm gonna read anything else by this author, I think I've read one book by him. If I'm gonna read anything else, it's probably not gonna be this one. I don't know a whole lot about it though, so I don't know. Then we have Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I am gonna read this book one day. I do have a copy of it and I just need to get to it. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins Burnett is one of my favorite books from childhood. I really love this book. It makes me feel very nostalgic and it's one of the first books that I read that I really like fell in love with and I could really picture. So I'm always gonna love this book. It does have some problematic stuff in it though, which makes it slightly less great. Then we have Scoop by Evelyn Waugh again. Not a lot interested in reading this, to be honest. If I'm gonna read anything by this author, it'll probably be the other one that we just saw. A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Again, I don't know about Dickens. I don't know if I'm gonna read something else by him, what I should read. Should I read this or Great Expectations? Let me know which one is best and shortest. Diary of a Nobody by George Grossmith and Whedon Grossmith. I haven't heard of this one, although I kind of like this cover. It looks to me like one of those like slightly funny and humorous books. If any of you have read it, let me know what you thought. Then we have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. A really long book, but I have read it and I loved it. I think it's such a masterpiece of a book and it was just a real experience to read. I felt very immersed and it's one of my favorite classics. The Betrothed by Alessandro Manzoni. I have never heard of. This says it's a story of two young lovers. Maybe not that interested in that. Then we have Orlando by Virginia Woolf, which I am interested in. I want to read all of Woolf's books at some point. I've read three or four of them so far. I haven't read this one though, so it's on the list. Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. I am not particularly interested in. I don't think I'm interested in this author at all, to be honest. And I actually got a comment on a video I did where I mentioned this author and I was talking about how I wasn't interested in reading her books. And the comment said that she was really problematic, apparently, although I do think a lot of classic authors probably were a little bit problematic, but apparently she was and that makes me even less interested and reading anything by her. The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. I definitely want to read. I have a copy of it and I'm thinking of trying to read it next year. I really like H.G. Wells actually. I've read one or two of his books and I think they're pretty cool. Then we have The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I don't think I'm particularly interested in reading this. It's like military strategy. Eh, not that interested. Then we have The Foresight Saga by John Galsworthy. I've heard of this book, but I have no idea what it's about. It does say that this chronicles the Foresight's family's fortunes and downfalls as they live through dramatic social change from the straight-laced Victorian era to the Roaring Twenties. That does sound interesting. I always love the Roaring Twenties, so maybe I should read this. If you read it, let me know what you thought. Travels with Charlie by John Steinbeck. Again, if I'm gonna read anything by John Steinbeck right now, it's gonna be East of Eden, so I don't really know about this one. Tropic of Cancer by Henry Miller. I haven't heard of 
I've heard of Henry Miller, but I've never heard of this book, although it does say it was banned for being too pornographic, so maybe it could be interesting. There's something about banned books that immediately makes me more interested. <laughs> I think it's that thing where if someone tells you not to do something, you kind of immediately want to do it. Then we have Women in Love by D.H. Lawrence. I have never heard of this book, I've only heard of this author. I don't know if I'm particularly interested in it, although the title does sound interesting. Then we have Staying On by Paul Scott. I have never heard of this one, and so I'm not super interested in it, maybe. It does say it gives us a unique insight into life just after the end of the British rule in India, though which does sound interesting. The Wind in the Willows is a book that I have heard of, but I didn't read it when I was a kid. I think this is a children's book. I really like this cover though, like the design is really nice. Let me know if this is one of those children's books that would be nice to read even when you're an adult. It says so here, so maybe I should give it a go. Then we have My Antonia by Willa Cather. I've never heard of this book. I don't think I've heard of this author either. Weathering Heights by Emily Bronte. I have read and I loved it when I read it. It's not that long ago and I just remember loving it, but I think I was just like really in the mood for it when I read it. I don't think I would like it as much on a reread because it's just like super dramatic, so I'll probably never read this book again unless the mood strikes me, but when I read it, I really liked it. Then we have Perfume by Patrick Susskind. I really like this book as well. It's one of the most disgusting books I've ever read, but it's really, really well done. And it's like, it describes smells in a way that is just so visceral. Like it's, it's fantastic. It's so gross, but it's amazing. I think I mentioned that I have read War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. I am probably never going to read that book again because speaking of long books, that is the longest of the longest books. Like it's massive. I'm glad I read it though because now I've <laughs> sort of gotten it over with, but never going to read that again. Of Human Bondage by Somerset Mom. I've heard of this author, but I haven't really heard of this book, I don't think. I don't know if I'm interested in this author at all, to be honest. If you think his books would be like good reads for me, let me know. Again, we have another Charles Dickens, Bleak House. I don't know if I'll ever read it. I just, I don't know. Then we have Lost Illusions, which I don't think I've ever heard of, although I've seen this cover before, and it says it paints a vivid and brutal picture of the hypocrisy and moral history of this author's times. Not super interested by just reading that. Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut. I haven't heard of this book, but I have heard of this author, and I really want to try some of his books, but I don't know where to start, so if any of you have any recommendations, let me know. I feel like... I have two books on my like Goodreads TBR by him, so I should really try to like get some and try to read them. We have yet another Charles Dickens. We have A Christmas Carol. This one I do actually think I want to read. I don't know why, I just think it sounds quite interesting and it sounds like kind of like a dark Christmas book, which I'm into. Then we have Seelus. Marner by George Eliot. Again, if I'm gonna read anything by George Eliot, it's gonna be Middlemarch. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. I think I mentioned this is my favorite Virginia Woolf and I love this book. It is a little bit like, again, because of the way it's written, it can be a little bit difficult to get into, but I just remember racing through this book and loving it. We're in the final 20 now and up next we have Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I have read this book and I know so many people just love this, but I just didn't really like it. I thought it was really long and kind of boring and I just wasn't that invested, which I know is <laughs> kind of like controversial maybe, but I think the problem with this is just me. It's not the book because I know so many people love it. So for some reason, it just didn't really work for me. The Sea of the Sea by Iris Murdoch is a book that I definitely want to read. I have a copy of it. I have a couple of this author's books actually, and I really want to get into her work, so I just need to do that. And we have The Godfather by Mario Puzo. I don't want to read this book. 
I don't think. And I know that the movies are like classics and people love the movies, but I tried watching the first one and I couldn't get through it. So I know that's just me. It's just me who's like being weird, I guess, but not interested in this. There's actually something about like mafia stories that just does nothing for me. So not interested in this or in the movies, to be honest. <laughs> the Castle by Franz Kafka. I don't know if I'm really interested in. I kind of want to try some of this author's work, but I don't know what I want to try. Then we have I, Claudius by Robert Graves. I have never heard of this one. I really like this cover though, but haven't really heard of it, so maybe I'm not super interested in it. Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I haven't read, but I really should. I've, I feel like I read some like children's versions of this book when I was a kid. I feel like maybe I haven't, like I had an illustrated copy of it, but I don't remember. I've seen the movie though. Does that count? <laughs> a Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. I have heard of, don't think I have much interest in reading. The Razor's Edge by W. Somerset Mom. Again, kind of want to read something by this author, but I don't know what to start with, so I don't know if I want to read this or not. Lark Rise to Candleford by Flora Thompson. I have never heard of. It says it paints a delightful portrait of country life at the end of the 19th century though, so maybe it could be interesting. Again, really like this cover. The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. I have read two books by Thomas Hardy and I have another one on my shelves, but I've actually never heard of this book. I quite like Thomas Hardy's writing though, so maybe I should try this out. A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. I do want to read. I don't know why I want to read it. I think it's just because I've heard a lot about it. So I think I want to read it. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. This is a novella, I think, and it is deemed by many to be a difficult read. So maybe I'm not super interested in it. I don't like really difficult books. Like if I have a hard time understanding things, I <laughs> generally don't like them. So I'm a little on the fence about that one. North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. Again, this is like one of those super long books that I feel like I should read but I don't know if I want to. Now, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, I love. It's one of my favorite books. I think it's a masterpiece of a novel. I also really love the show. I think the show has done a really good job with the story. I love everything about The Handmaid's Tale. I think it's amazing. Then we have Sweet Francais by Irene Nemirovsky. I haven't heard of this one, although it's from 2004. Can that be a classic? Isn't that too young? I don't know, but I've never heard of it, and so I don't know if I'm that interested in it. One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich. I feel like I've heard of, but I don't know. I'm guessing this is like a Russian classic. It says it's a deeply personal and unforgettable account of a day in the life of a Soviet labor camp in the 1950s. That sounds really interesting, so maybe I should add this to my TBR actually, because I think I'd be interested in reading that. What a Carve Up by Jonathan Coe. Never heard of this, but this cover is really cool. I really like that. I don't know anything about this. It says that this family are the most powerful and cruelest family in England, which sounds very interesting. It says it's dark and wickedly funny. Maybe I should get a copy of this. Maybe this copy, because this looks great. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Not interested in that. Like the title is just like, already I'm just like, nah. Second to last, we have another, Fyodor Dostoevsky. We have White Knights. This looks like one of those like little penguin black classics, which means it's really short. So I could read this maybe, I don't know. Lastly, we have Hard Times again with Charles Dickens. I don't know. I don't know if I want to read it. I. Yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> that was the entire list. A lot of books, but we made it through. I think this is going to be kind of a long video, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And I would love to know which ones of these you have read and what you thought, which ones you might be interested in reading. And maybe 
if you feel like some books are missing from this list, which ones are missing, tell me. As usual, links to my Patreon and other social media will be in the description if you're interested, and I will see you soon.